The big story tonight, the stalemate continues uh, regarding the proposed amendments to electoral laws in this country. We've just spoken to Honorable Anthony Olwoch, who's the Madhari Member of Parliament. Senator Johnson Sakaja had wanted to respond to that, and he's been uh, listening to what uh, Anthony Olwoch uh, had to say just a short while ago. Senator, uh, your reaction to his comments? I think, um, unfortunately, uh, um, because uh, it's done to the what NASA is, it is that uh, NASA is not in, in an um, and uh, completely trying to All figure right. out how to stop how to stop this election. All right, Senator, uh, I'm sorry, we, we want to fix uh, your microphone. Um, and then we will come back to you. We definitely have to get your comment on that. Uh, apologies for that. Let's fix that sound with Senator Sakaja, and then we will get back to him. Meanwhile, uh, here at uh, the Standard Group uh, KTN News Center, uh, Willis Satieno, who is part of the NASA Presidential Secretariat, joins me this evening. Um, okay, Willis, uh, I'd like us to get through a number of issues tonight. First of all, um, you know, the state of the talks. Uh, the Standard newspaper reported this morning that there is hope as Jubilee, uh, Ryla, Met IEBC. In his statement today, Ryla says, and I quote, do not be cheated. The NASA has some agreement with IEBC. Um, uh, we have no such agreement, and our faith in IEBC remains zero. Is exactly. that where it stands? Exactly. That is the absolute truth. We do not have any faith in the commission. Our position still remains as it were, if you do remember, those talks were called between the presidential candidates, His Excellency Raila Odinga and Uru Kenyatta. Uru Kenyatta did not attend those talks. IBC, we had served them previously with our irreducible minimums. And these irreducible minimums, we must bear in mind, are irreducible minimums that are derived from the judgment of the Supreme Court of Kenya in petition number one of 2017, in which Raila Odinga was the petitioner. IBC and its chairman were the first and second respondents. Uru Kenyatta was the third respondent. Now, we are the ones who went to court and successfully argued these points. We have distilled from that judgment what are some of the issues that we were conversing in court that made the elections to be declared irregular and illegal to the extent that for the first time in the Commonwealth and in Africa, our presidential election was nullified. IBC has not even bothered to take action on its own motion on some of the personnel who may have been complicit. They have not done anything in their own space without our involvement that inspires confidence that they are recognizing that a Supreme Court has condemned some of their processes and has made adverse findings which now require them to look internally and retrospect in a way that will assist them come up with action that uh, respects and accords with the determination right. okay. of the Supreme well, Court. They've well, not done that. So we cannot say that we are making any progress. We All went right. to meet them yesterday in good faith. And Willis, I will tell you that good faith was not reciprocated. Willis, be that as it may, um, there have been some concessions on the part of IBC, at least uh, as far as we understand. Uh, the chair, Wafula Chebukati, has said they're making necessary arrangements in accordance with your request for the Forms 34B. Um, remember, they had said tell, that they let wanted... Let me tell you that. Let me, uh, let me just me speak finish. on 34B. Okay, sorry. Uh, Allow me to finish, sorry, Willis. Sorry. Um, that they would then, uh, you remember there was the issue about having the original form and then the others being Excel worksheets, right? Um, there was a, a, a complaint that was raised by Senator James Orengo and we understand Chebukati says they're making the necessary arrangements so that um, they have listened to your proposals on that and will make the necessary arrangements in line with your requirements and your requests. Um, some would say that speaks of compromise. Let, let me say this, nothing could be further from the truth. In fact, if you listen to IABC, you get more sad when you listen to them. They don't even know what the mischief was. They are telling us that they will preprint page one. That's the first page of Form 34B. The other pages will be still in Excel document. What does that mean? What was the mischief in these forms? I was at Milimani Locots. I sat through the whole night going through laboriously all those forms. And I will tell you, the mischief was you had a process where 
IBC officials were using Excel documents, and once presiding officers had handed over to them results, which they would enter into the computers on the Excel sheet, the presiding officers and the agents would walk out. The returning officer will be left on his own with an Excel sheet document, and then the alteration of results will start immediately. Why? Because he had a soft copy of a document which he could comfortably alter, and nobody could tell that an alteration had been done because the people who brought the results will have left that room. Now, what we were saying was, we are paying top dollar for the printing services to Al Gurair. What is so difficult in having Al Gurair or whatever company that will print these forms to preprint all Form 34 Bs, indicate the names of all the candidates, total number of votes cast, total number of registered voters list of all polling stations per constituency. So that when the voter walk, the presiding office and agents walk to the telling center, uh -huh. they physically, the returning officer physically writes the votes for that particular polling station against the name of each candidate. Okay. IBC is refusing what to me is a very basic, simple requirement. And All right, that, so, that, so, let me so just Willis, say this. Let me just finish. So, Willis, what when you're saying say tonight this, is that what Chebukati is talking about in terms of um, listening to your proposal on the Forms 34B and saying he will make the necessary arrangements for that, are you tonight saying that he is not being truthful lying. with that he's statement? He's not being truthful to Kenyans. He's only committing to preprinting page one. He's not talking about the subsequent pages. And the mischief is in the subsequent pages. And if you look at the forms which the Supreme Court condemned, that mischief is still there. You can see it. The form, page one, most of them are okay. okay. But you go to subsequent um, pages, you right. start seeing the mischief. Okay, I, I would like us to, we'll hear from Senator Sakaja in just a moment. Um, but here's uh, the thing about negotiations that some people would say it's give and take. Yes. Um, seems like there's another requirement uh, that perhaps may have happened to try and soften NASA's stance. The DPP acknowledged your request uh, and has promised to, he started investigations, expedite those into a number of individuals that NASA raised, uh, managers at Safaricom, um, as well as Davis Church, who was the Jubilee Party chief agent. And he says he's promised to expedite that. So there seems to be some sort of um, leeway on one end, but NASA st still but, seems but, to hold firm uh, with the irreducible minimums. Two, day, two years ago, His Excellency Uru Kenyatta, addressed the Kenyan parliament, and he did say there were investigations being undertaken against the following public servants. Kindly step aside and allow the public space to continue operating without your interference. Those who are being investigated did not participate in governance in this country for the duration that they were under investigations. David Churchill now, the one of the persons who's been adversely mentioned, stepped aside from being a cabinet secretary as a result of that presidential decree. Now, we do have a commission where its own officers have engaged in acts of illegalities and irregularities. In fact, some of them have been reported to the DBP, as you rightfully say. But the same commission wants to use the same officers to conduct an election which the IBC... What happens to accountability? What's happened to people taking charge, taking, taking responsibility for their action? There must be somebody who was responsible for the mess that was the 8th August presidential elections. And that person cannot be part of the next general elections when okay. we have it. All right, Senator Sakaja, I know you've been following this uh, from your office. Uh, your reaction and your response uh, to Willis Sotieno tonight? Very... First of all, you know, uh, listening to my friend Willis just shows you what great tragedy we have in this country when people decide to ignore you know the institutions that are supposed to sort out these problems and uh, choose to to deal with them you know in the, in the, in the manner they, they they know best which is on the on the streets and on trees and all that um the first thing is talking about accountability by these officers which officers of the ibc precipitated an uh, nullification of the election because of the illegalities it is the officers who refused to sign Form 34, um, who refused uh, you know, uh, to, to, to affix stamps, etc. And we are saying within the committee um, that these people must be you know, held to account. In fact, we even proposed a jail term um, for returning officers who deliberately choose, despite the fact that they've put the votes and they've filled the forms, to sign those forms and to make them you know, in the manner they're supposed to make them. Now, the only institution, and, and, and Yvonne, I need you to get this very clearly, this election cannot be run on the irreducible minimums of one candidate. 
we in Jubilee have no irreducible minimums. In fact, the only two who can have a irreducible minimum is one, the judiciary, because the Supreme Court um, annulled the election for one reason or another, and it's based on those minimums that they stated in the ruling that were amending the law. The things Willis is talking about, for example, how the want from 34B to look like, page one, page two, are things that are being discussed in a committee where they need to have members who've been elected by Kenyans to sit in and go through that discussion. So don't us to meet on Moy Avenue, uh, on the streets, to discuss that, you know? It's parliament that is the law-making body. So they cannot tell us they have reducible minimums, yet they don't want to engage and address those loopholes, which has rightly put, you know, you cannot have an election that is run properly. Everybody said, including them, voting was okay, counting was okay, tallying was okay, filling of forms. We are saying that then if a returning officer decides to cost this Kenya 15 billion shillings and a lot of tension for an election by willingly, you know, not uh, filling in details, he must be held to account so that doesn't happen again. Okay. They have a problem with that. How they'd like Form 34B to look like are things that we can also agree in within the institution set by this constitution. All so right. we will not do an election just on the irreducible minimum okay. of an individual, but on the law. And they have a seat at the table. And if you're not on the table, you're on the menu. So oh. they, they need to be serious. But okay. finally, if right, let me Senator. say this. Yes, please. Our constitution is very clear. Just, just one second. Our constitution is extremely clear. The term of office of the president is from the time he's sworn in to the time another one is sworn in. That is Article 142 of our constitution. All right. If they are not interested in an election, we will wait until the day they are interested, whether it is 2017, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, Uhuru Kenyatta will still be the president of the Republic of All Kenya. Right, okay. And when they're ready, we will have an election, and that will be the end of his first term of office. All right, Senator. Thanks for that, for joining us uh, from your office at the KICC. If you're not on uh, uh, the menu, you're on the table. Okay. If you're not on the table, rather, you're on the menu. Um, if you're not on the on table, you're, you're on, the on the menu. menu. Let, 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 me mention, let me mention this before yes. Senator goes away. If yes, Senator please. is confident about... Number one, the tragedy is that Senator is trying to invite me to a jubilee parliamentary group meeting at uh, KICC or whatever it is they're having that dialogue. That is not a dialogue. I'm not inviting that you, is, I'm inviting NASA that is, elected that leaders, is, not that you. Is, that is a jubilee parliamentary group meeting. NASA will not participate in it. We, The people of Kenya who are the majority that support NASA will not participate in that process. And that you must take home. Another thing that you must take into account is this. Even right now in the election laws that we have, what took place in the last elections constitute election offenses under the Election Offenses Act. You do not need to amend any law to penalize persons who commit those offenses. Those offenses are already in the law. Okay, Willis, um, I'd like us to move uh, the conversation forward. And thank you very much, Senator uh, Johnson Sakaja, for joining us. Um, but I'd like us to move to uh, another issue, and which is that uh, NASA has raised uh, certain issues with uh, Safaricom participating in this repeat presidential poll. And uh, today, uh, Bob Colimo, who's the CEO of uh, Safaricom, um, had an interesting uh, statement. Um, I, I wonder if we have it Ready. Um, let's listen to Bob Collymore. This is what he said earlier. Well, let's listen. No, Safaricom does not find itself intimidated by anyone and by anything. We believe we have a role to play together with the other mobile operators, and we will continue to play that role. We're not going to be intimidated by that. And all right, I'm not sure you heard that clip because I didn't, but I will tell you what he said, that Safaricom will not be intimidated into withdrawing services for the October 26th election. He, however, welcomes a probe on rigging claims, and indeed, uh, several senior managers of Safaricom are under investigation by the DPP. Willis, your response to this, Bob Colimo saying Safaricom will still carry on to bid for that, even as we know Chebukati says they're still um, in talks it's not a done deal yet, but they are definitely considering Safaricom for uh, the transmission of results? It's not our intention to intimidate Safaricom. They can uh, engage in whatever they want to do. But Safaricom is bound by the constitution and the election laws of this republic. They are bound by the data management laws of this republic. We are simply saying, if indeed they are clean, then Safaricom should open up its own processes on how data was managed in the last election, which was indicted by the Supreme Court, and show us how that process was free and fair, and there was no interference. They should not act. Why are they all over town right now trying to make all kinds of noises? Just by somebody mentioning that you're in charge of data. That data has never been seen back in Kenya. In fact, the information that we have is that you transmit that data from Kenya to some servers in France, and nobody can even tell whether that data was actually transmitted in, in truth 
or it was never transmitted. These are legitimate questions. And the foundation of these legitimate questions is the Article 81 of our Constitution, which provides for the principles of the electoral system. It must be transparent. Safaricom must be transparent to the people of Kenya as long as it engages in our elections. Number two, the electoral system must be verifiable. It must be accountable. Now, Safaricom, as long as it is going to play a role in these elections, will be called to account and explain to the people of Kenya what its role was. And if it comes out that any of its officers, at whatever level, was involved in data manipulation, was involved in undermining the expression of the free will of the voters of Kenya, then those officers will have committed offenses under the Election Offenses Act. Okay. And they must be called to account. All right. The Carter Center today released a statement, um, and they say that uh, they plan to observe uh, uh, the October 26th election at the invitation of the IEBC. But this is what uh, the statement that came out from the Carter Center. Um, it says... Um, in part, uh, the center urges the two candidates to refrain from attacks on the Supreme Court and the IEBC, which only serve to undermine independence of ju judiciary and reduce public trust in the IEBC. It goes on to say that the reaction of both the main candidates and campaigns to the court decision has not been conducive to the holding of credible elections on the 26th of October. Your reaction to this statement from the Carter Center that will be observing this process yet again? Our uh, says, really, Carter Center? Really? Really, after what we went through, Carter Center was the first observer mission to give a clean bill of health to the last general elections. In fact, their mission leaders' uh, statements was being, were being played in court as if that was the Messiah who had come, John Kerry, had come to Kenya, cleansed our electoral system. We had done, in fact, in his words, we had had the best, the most perfect election that he has ever observed in his entire lifetime. What nonsense was that? Please, Carter Center should give the people of Kenya a break. Okay. We they... cannot have different standards being applied to the people of Kenya than they apply in their own countries. I All do right. believe that if we had the kind of election that we had in Kenya, in the United States of America, there are people who may have mismanaged this process who will be in jail today. They will not be asked. They okay. will only ask the people of America to give them public confidence and to support them. All right. They will Willis, be demanding for them to be in jail. Willis, there has been the talk about international um, you know, best practice, which is that the laws should not be changed um, a couple of, uh, you know, a short while, maybe a year or two uh, towards the election. The EU Election Observer Mission noted this yesterday in their statement as well. Um, but I want to put this to you because you yourself went to court on behalf of Maina Kiai to make the amendments to law that we now know declaring the constituency as the final uh, point of announcement. The, so um, NASA did it, you did it, you went to court, and these uh, effects, these changes took effect a, a, a little over 30 days to the election. No, no, let, so let, me, is explain, it, let me explain to you the minor KI case. In yeah. fact, the minor KI case did not make any new law. The minor KI case simply invited the court to interpret Article 138.2 of the Constitution. And that article, as of today, as it was in 2013, as it was on the 27th of August when the people of Kenya enacted the constitution, provides that whenever there are two or more candidates nominated for election of president, a presidential election shall be held in each constituency. IBC, by conduct previously, by conduct even in the last election, still refuses to conduct constituency-based presidential elections. They are still conducting elections as if it's a national election. They are even in contempt of the minor KI case. The judiciary and the court of appeal very well explained that process, how elections are supposed to be done. Our case was not a case to introduce a new law. Our case was only to breathe life and to give meaning to the provisions of Article 138 .2. Okay. And to also say uh -huh. that once results are declared at the constituency level, those results are final and right. cannot be tinkered with. Willis, I have one minute and one question. Yes. The Deputy President William Ruto said they have plans for agents at all the 41,000 polling stations. They say they are ready. They're out on the campaign trail. Um, they're doing this already. They're already pre uh, presenting their agents to the IEBC. However, NASA, on the other hand, uh, still unhappy with what uh, the IEBC is doing, saying they're not ready for an election. My question to you is, are you ready for an election? As NASA, will you be participating uh, in this election? 
NASA was ready for the elections on the 8th of August. We are still ready for elections, but what we are saying, there shall be no elections if the irreducible minimums are not respected and okay. adhered to. All right. Okay. Thank you very much. Willis Sotieno from the NASA Presidential Campaign Secretariat. Um, my thanks as well to Anthony Olwoch, who's the Madara Member of Parliament, Senator Johnson Sakata, and as always, Sofia Wanuna, our lead reporter here on The Big Story. This continues to be the big story in the days to come. It's 21 days to the election. Uh, will there be a breakthrough in the talks? Will NASA's irreducible minimums be considered by the IEBC? And will there be finally some tripartite talks with all three stakeholders, the major ones at least, seated on the same table to make sure that all of these issues are ironed out. That will continue to be the big story for some days to come. I'm Yvonne Okwara Matole. Good night. We'll see you again tomorrow.